In this episode of Fieldwork, we explore the question, how the hell do you beat Carnival of Horrors? I saw this question posited by user Jasmina on Reddit, and they were asking for advice on how to get through the scenario. A couple of people responded with, uh, it, there's a lot of moving, so cards like Shortcut, Pathfinder, Elusive, Astral Traveler would be great. There's a lot of fighting, somebody said, um, so make sure you use a Guardian or something like that. Somebody said, barely. And so I got to thinking about how this scenario really attacks you at multiple angles. There's willpower tests that are three or higher. There's agility tests that are four or higher. There's enemies with three or four health. There's uh, investigating to do, and there's lots of movement, just like everybody mentioned. And I felt like the first investigator to come to mind with the best multitasking ability was Rex. Now we're going to see this in a bit, but the main shtick of Carnival is that at every location there are carnival goers and you're trying to find the good guys amongst the potential bad guys. When you flip them over, they might attack you or they might be good. And so there, it really taxes your action economy because you're trying to, you can't, you have the option of peeking at, at some of them for a clue or you can just straight flip them over for a clue and you're trying to find the good guys. You're trying to get those good guys to bring them with you and take them to back to that little nun over there in order to get them to safety. But for some crazy reason, they need convincing. And so you're spending, you also have to spend time to parlay with them and get them to follow you. So my immediate concept for the deck was to use fine clothes with Rex so that way you can multitask. You can get the innocent revelers to join you by parlaying for zero instead of two. And that's going to increase the likelihood that you'll get to trigger Rex's ability in order to pick up the clues from the locations at the same time. Um, so I don't have to convince too many of you that Rex is great at multitasking, um, but I, that's just where my mind went, first thing. In order to address some of the other points, I have this little checklist here. To address all the movement that we need, we have one elusive in there, so that way we can just kind of teleport to where we need to go. And of course we have Pathfinder, which gives us a free move action. So that's going to really help us with that. Next point deals with high health enemies. Fire Axe is really great in order to deal two damage, but a lot of these enemies have three, sometimes four, sometimes five damage. So I decided to include two Vicious Blow in order to kind of deal that deadly Vicious Blow. Uh, that, that'll hopefully deal with them completely. Uh, I've got a plan and Mind Over Matter are, are also going to help with this. And Disc of Insomna is going to be really great since this is a 9 XP um, deck. Basically, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, with that, is it, it just if you have it in play, it's a 3 cost asset. If you have it in play and an enemy spawns at you that's non-elite, you can just discard it in order to discard the enemy. So that's going to be great. In order to multitask, I already talked about that a little bit, but we have the uh, Dr. Milan, which will boost up our intellect even more to hopefully trigger that threshold uh, that Rex has of de defeating a test by two or more in order to pick up a clue at the location. And able to deal with problematic treacheries, I put dot, 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 kinda, because... Uh, You'll see why, but I, I did include some sort of like test theory crafting cards like Fieldwork, which gives you plus two to the skill test um, just after moving to a new location, or In the Know, which lets you investigate any revealed location. I included those three cards because uh, I was just testing them out. I thought they maybe had some some use in this scenario because of all the, the mobility and the movement that we're going to be doing, and just in case we were forced to move somewhere else, we can use In the Know to investigate another location but just as, as you know as uh, hopefully this isn't too much foreshadowing but um, just some advice I would really opt for two overpowers uh, maybe two manual dexterities as well um, just to make sure that we're covering all of our bases and getting pips in all areas because like I've mentioned this scenario really taxes you and with every single skill every single action uh, pretty much every facet it's a very tough scenario so, without further ado, let's get into it. Look, Sheriff Engel insists, I know it sounds crazy, but that's really all there is to it. He sighs and sits back down, pouring a cup of joe for you and one for himself. A dame in uptown spotted a cracked egg wearing this mask and holding a blood butcher's cleaver. 
he says, motioning to the black leather mask sitting on his desk. It has a comically long nose and a strange symbol scrawled in yellow on its forehead. So, she calls it in. My boys and I picked him up on the corner of Salt and Stall and Garrison. The sheriff's jaw clenches and his brows furrow as he recounts the story. Fella did nothing but laugh as we slapped the bracelets on him. Called himself Zanny. Said nothing except the carnival is coming. Whatever the hell that meant. It wasn't until the next day we found the victim's body. Defense wanted him in a straitjacket. We were happy to oblige. There isn't much time to spare. If your research is right, there's more to this case than meets the eye. This Zanny wasn't talking about Dark's Carnival, but rather the Carnival of Venice, which begins just before the next full moon. Agenda 1A, the festivities begin. Last minute ocean liner tickets from Boston to Italy set you back a fair bit of dough, but after a tense journey, you arrive in Venice. The carnival has already begun and the city is in celebration. Colorful confetti rains from above, covering the streets. Many revelers throng in the Piazza San Marco, the square outside the Basilica. The parade is to begin shortly. You find the nearest uniform carabinieri and show him a copy of the symbol you transcribed from Zanni's mask. He pauses to decide your trustworthiness, nods, and escorts you into the Basilica to see the Abbess Allegria di Biase. There's an eight-doom threshold. Act 1A, The Carnival Conspiracy. The abbess addresses you privately. So, you know what is coming. You nod. Then you know what must be done. They are using the celebration as a sacrifice for their wretched master. Bring as many innocents as you can here, where I can protect them. But beware, the creature's servants will try to blend into the crowd with their false masks. It has the action, the investigators spend one clue as a group to look at the other side of a mass carnival goer at any location, and the objective, if there are a total of three innocent revelers underneath the act and or agenda, advance. Let's head to the table and see if we can answer the question, how the hell do you beat Carnival of Horrors? All right, so we're going to put Rex on the table, and we get our five starting cards, and we're going to set that weakness aside. We're also going to set aside the uh, guts, just because we want to get... Uh, pieces like that, like the fine clothes in order to help us with the um, parlay actions we're going to be taking. Okay, We can either move and start investigating right away, or we can get set up. So I think what we want to do is we want to get set up right away. We're going to get that Pathfinder down. That's going to help us with mobility in this. Um, if you've ever played this scenario, you, you know that mobility is huge. Um, the fine clothes is going to be huge for getting those revelers, those innocent revelers to join us to safety. And uh, the fire axe for killing things. And then the magnifying glass just goes down because we're just, we don't want to forget about it. We're just putting it down. For the uh, upkeep phase, we get Dr. Milan. And for the mythos phase, we add that doom and we get a writhing appendage. So we're, we're thinking about how we want to deal with this writhing appendage. We're just moving that up there for um, consolidation purposes. And we're thinking to ourselves that we're going to just go ahead and axe this thing. And it has some text about wanting to tax us, but we're, gonna, we're not going to give it a chance. We're going to get those resources down with the axe, and we're going to get that chaos out and kill it because we do an additional damage with that fire axe. All right, that was our first action. We're going to use the nun's uh, ability to move to a connecting location. That's a free action, so we're going to go over there. And when we enter the location, it gets two uh, clues, and we can draw a card. So we chose to activate its, its uh, reaction ability to draw a card, but we got our curse, Rex's curse. And Rex's curse is such that whenever we would succeed, we have to draw another token, and if we fail then we get to shuffle his uh, curse back into the deck, but if we succeed, then we just succeed, and it stays on the table until we fail. So I'm trying to decide what, what I want to do, and I want to get Milan out, so I play the quiche in preparation for Milan, but then I think I just go ahead and and investigate straight up. So it's, I think, uh, I have five versus um, two, I think, on, on the location. And I succeed the first time, but then I pull this organ, and that's a minus four, and so we fail. But we get to shuffle that curse back. We don't get any clues. We stand that nun back up after she pushed us out of her 
out of her uh, place there. And we go to upkeep. We got our vicious blow. That's going to be great for uh, odd health enemies. And we have to test uh, willpower three because one of our allies might get abducted, but we don't have any allies. We just have fine clothes, which looks like an ally. Um, we succeed because it wasn't even. I think I was excited because it was three uh, willpower. I have uh, Rex has three willpower, and I didn't boost it. It was just three versus three, high chance of failure. Um, but I succeeded. I didn't have to lose any of those resources, so we get to play Doctor Milan. So you know, in retrospect, it was kind of stupid to just play the the emergency quiche. Um, and not do anything about it. Uh, I, I should probably, knowing that something like abduction exists, I would have uh, kept it in my hand. All right, so uh, once we put him down, uh, we put Milan down for our first action. For our second action, we're going to go ahead and try to get one of those clues, finally. So let's see how we do. We have uh, an investigative five versus, I think, two on the location which is just enough for us to get one, but we don't get Rex's ability. That's okay. All we need is one. Well, we need a lot more than one, but <laughs> I'm happy to get one. All right, and we're thinking with our third action, we can just do it again. But we decide, let's go ahead and peek at this um, unma mass carnival goer here and it's an enemy we just reveal that it's an enemy so we don't want to bother flipping that over and having it attack us we're trying to be cautious about that i've played this scenario before where i just kind of willy-nilly flip them over uh with our clues and then they attack us and it's just not a very good recipe for success all right we get a um a pole man or pullman who goes over to the canal side and he's waiting for us. That's for the mythos phase. All right, we're going to go ahead and... Um, we forgot to get our resources, our resource for uh, investigating successfully, so I retroactively did that. And I think I want to investigate again. We want to get all those clues. So again, that's five versus two. And we succeed. That's a minus two. So we get that clue. Again, now it doesn't matter if we get Rex's... Uh, uh, ability. A lot of um, Rex decks like to run burglary, so that way you're getting more resources and um, getting the clues too. Uh, but we decided to opt for uh, Elusive um, instead of that and a couple of other uh, off-class cards like Vicious Blow for the enemies. All right, I use the clue to look uh, to flip over, just, just straight up flip over that Reveler after moving there or I mean that Mass Carnival goer, and it happened to be an innocent reveler. So we we lucked out there. That's awesome. And we're doing a parlay test. I get a plus one. So that was uh, um, intellect is five versus zero uh, with the fine clothes. And we got a plus one. So. so we take the innocent reveler and get a clue for Rex's ability. And we go to, looks like upkeep. We get an Inquiring Mind. For the Mythos phase, we pull Lost in Venice. We take either two Horror or move to the location across from you. So that's all the way on the other side. I decide to take two Horror because we really want to explore all these locations and not jump across the, the whole map since we can't backtrack on this. We can only go clockwise. All right, now we're looking ahead, and we're looking at this Pullman. Uh... He's just he's a four four two. He does one damage and gives one horror, and he's in our way. We decide to spend a clue to look at the masked uh, party goer there, carnival goer there, and it was the Elisabetta Magro, and she gets revealed if you look at her with that ability. So um, she's a pain in the butt because she has aloof and she has four health, and she gets a doom at the end of every mythos phase. She's gonna be a pain in the butt. I already said that, but she's... Trust me. All right, so we do engage the Pullman. 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 And we decide to hit him with the axe, but it gets a little tricky because Rex only has a base attack of two. So with the axe, we could boost it all the way up to eight um, in order to get two damage, but he has four health. So what I do is I spend one resource to and one inquiring mind for three, four, five, six, seven attack versus uh, his attack. 
uh, four. I should be saying combat, not attack, but you know what I mean. And I succeed, so I just do a single damage because um, the fire axe only does an additional damage if um, if you have no resources. And I swing again with the hopes of finishing him off for three total damage by including the vicious blow and two resources to the fire axe for a total of seven attack versus four, and we're hoping for something good. The organ is minus three, so we did we perfect perfectly did it, um, luckily, because there is some nasty chaos tokens in this scenario. All right, so that between those two turns, we did a total of four damage, and we were able to finish him off. Moving on to the upkeep phase, we get an I've got a plan. We're definitely going to need that, uh, and one resource for the mythos phase. We add a doom. And for the encounter card, we pull Chaos in the Water. It's an agility four, and we have to damage an innocent reveler before anything else if we have one. Which is a bummer, because we have nothing to help us really with agility, uh, except for just the base agility that Rex already has. So we're destined to fail that one, and the innocent reveler gets a damage. For the start of our turn... Oh, and we add, we add a, a Doom to Elizabetta. Now, there's some weird timing there. We, we have, I think, five, let me see, five Doom on the agenda and one Doom on her, but it gets added at the end of the Mythos phase, so uh, we'll just keep that in mind going forward. We succeed with an investigation, and we take one of those clues. We didn't succeed by enough to get two clues, because I think we have an intellect of uh, four, five, six for investigating. And the location has a two shroud, so we beat it by one. The second uh, test, we get a minus six, so we fail, because that brings us to zero. And then the third test, we get a minus two, so we actually do succeed by two that time, but we don't have anything to get uh, additionally. We just pick up the single clue. We use our Pathfinder for an actionless move, and we reveal the Venetian Garden, which has a three shroud, one clue, and it's action, action, spend two resources to heal two horror. All right, and that was after our third action. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move to upkeep phase. We get a field work, with, which is pretty cool. It gives us plus two uh, skill value for moving in. Like if you move it to a new location with a clue in it, you get plus two to the next test. Let's see if we actually end up using that. This is just kind of a test to see uh, if we could take advantage of the mobility of Pathfinder. For Mythos, we get a Writhing Appendage. We add a Doom uh, to the... whatever her name is over there after the Mythos phase. Putting us at 8 for next turn. Alright, what are we going to do? We need to deal with this Writhing Appendage. It has 2 health, so we kind of need to stop what we're doing and chop that appendage away. We're thinking about whether or not we want to uh, put something down first, but... Uh, we're kind of in a tricky spot because we have four resources and we can only pump the axe uh, three times. So we can't really get down to zero resources. So we decide we'll take a damage by playing something in order to get our resources down so that when we spend resources for the fire axe, we're going to be left with zero in order to do an additional damage. So that's what we do. We spend those last two resources and we swing at them and we auto fail. <laughs> so all that work for nothing really. So our only option is to just swing two versus two and hope for a zero. We reveal a cultist, which makes you get another token. And I freak out because we got a zero. <laughs> so that was the best case scenario. And we get rid of that writhing appendage. Moving on to the upkeep phase, we draw into a vicious blow and get a resource. And we add our uh, doom that puts us at the eight doom threshold because of that lady over there. And when we flip it over, we get the baleful reveler. He is huge at 4 combat, 5 health, 3 agility, 2 damage, 2 horror, victory 2. Essentially, he has the hunter keyword, and whenever he comes after you, you have to pull another token. Uh, just random token, and if you get any of the special tokens, he moves again. Of course, only in the clockwise direction, but still, 2 hunter keywords like that can really mess you up if you're, if you're in one of those locations. Agenda 2A, The Shadow of the Eclipse. The clamor and celebration of the carnival has, for the most part, drowned out the terrors you've seen in the city. Until now. 
The sun vanishes behind the moon, and the darkness overtakes the sky. There's a solitary cry and the sound of crashing water. Within moments, screams erupt throughout the city, and yet, somehow, you see revelers still celebrating with wide, crazed smiles. Three Doom Threshold. And we still have to draw our encounter card, so let's go back to the table. So for our encounter card, we get Acrid Miasma, which you put at the location connected to you in the clockwise direction. And if you enter that location, which we're going to, we have to test willpower With two. failure resulting in a damage and a horror, or enemies get the hunter keyword activated. We decide we want to use one of our clues to peek at a masked party goer, carnival goer, and we see that that one at our location is, in fact, an enemy. So we don't want to reveal that one. We use Pathfinder to move to the next location, triggering that acrid miasma. So we're going to test that. We have three versus two. Are we going to boost? Do we have anything to boost with? Not really. And we pull a minus four, which is failure. Luckily, there's no, uh, there's not the enemy that it's referencing in play, so we don't get attacked. But we do have to either take one damage and one horror, or the hunter keyword is going to be triggered. So we take one damage and one horror, placing the damage on Rex and the horror on the innocent reveler. And that was all just for entering the location, so we can continue with our uh, rest of our actions. This should be our second action now. We're going to spend a clue just to flip that over. And it's an innocent reveler. So we're going to parlay with our final action. And that's five intellect versus zero because of the fine clothes. And we pull a cultist, which makes us draw another token, which is a zero. So we pass with flying colors, which allows us to not only take the reveler, but trigger Rex's ability for a clue, since we pass by at least two. And moving on to the upkeep phase, we get in the know, which allows us to investigate any uh, face-up location, any revealed location on the map, which might come in handy if we get in a bind later on and we can't backtrack. We go ahead and add one Doom for Mythos, and our first encounter card is another Acrid Miasma, which we have to put on the next location. And again, we test Willpower 2, and if we fail, we take one damage and one horror, or the Hunter keyword is activated. So now we're deciding what we... Uh, oh, we skipped the enemy phase by accident, so we're kind of jumping over to that. Uh, the Hunter keyword is triggered, and there's no special token revealed, so he doesn't hunt us again. He just gets to stay there. Okay, back to our regular turn. Decide we want to spend a clue to reveal the mass Carnival Goer, and it's an innocent reveler this time, so we can safely go flip it over. We decide to try to investigate first, and we successfully investigate for one clue. We add that clue to our clue pool, and then we use the Pathfinder, which it was already exhausted, but it was we forgot to stand it up last time. We use the Pathfinder to get over to the new location, and we reveal that it has one clue, Shroud of Two, and we realize that we could have moved from that location as, a, as an action, as a free action, so we stand the Pathfinder back up for later use. All right, and we already know that it's an innocent reveler under there, so we're deciding whether or not we want to find the clue on the location first or flip over the innocent reveler. So we spend a clue in order to flip over the masked carnival goer, and it is an innocent reveler, but then we realize that we skip the acrid miasma trigger, so we move the baleful reveler. We get a minus six so he doesn't have to move again. All right, everything is as it should be. That was our last action to flip over the uh, carnival goer. So we go to upkeep, we get an inquiring mind, and we add a doom, forcing us to advance the agenda, threshold, which says, and it says, the shadow of the eclipse is unrelenting. Throughout the city, a dull chant overtakes the screaming and the chaos, its language ancient and morbid. Tentacles course through the canals from the south, weaving beneath bridges and trapping entire islands within their grasp. And then we have to, if there are one or more mass carnival goers in play, the lead investigator chooses one and flips it over to its other side. If its other side's an innocent reveler, you place it underneath the agenda deck. And if after that there's still a mass carnival goer, uh, we flip this back to 2A and have to do it all over again, which is the case for us. But otherwise we would advance to 3A. So let's get back to the table so I can resolve that. 
All right, so back at the table, we flip that guy over due to the agenda, and he has a hunter keyword. And there are still uh, mass carnival goers, so we flip it back over and we clear all the doom. But then at the uh, we draw an encounter card. Again, abduction. So we have to test willpower three, and if we fail, we either discard an ally or we lose all of our resources. So we don't boost this, I don't think. No, we don't boost this. And we get a minus two, which is failure. Because we only did three versus three, so we decide we'll lose all of our resources because we still need the damage and horror soak from Milan. All right, we add a doom to Elizabetta at the end of the Mythos phase. All right, we're trying desperately to get over to... Uh, to back to San Marco Basilica, and we are so close to getting our third Innocent Reveler. We just need to make that parlay test, and we'll see what we get. We have, again, five versus zero, and we get zero, so not only do we get the Innocent Reveler, we get a clue from the location for Rex. So then we use the Pathfinder to move over to the next location. We reveal it. It has one clue, and it says after you... The, the other location said after you leave, you lose an action, so it actually costs us uh, an action to move over there, um, one action total. And then we decide to use the nun's ability to pull us over to the third to the final location, and our uh, we lose uh, a couple of resources. We would if we had any. And we uh, trigger our third action to put the Innocent Reveler underneath the act. Moving on to the enemy phase, the Baleful Reveler moves once, and with the random Chaos token, we get one of the special tokens, so he has to move again. And then Don Legorio also moves from the We refresh everything, word. moving on to upkeep. We draw and we gain a resource. For Mythos, we add a Doom, and we draw encounter card Mesmerize, but that gains Surge because there's no masked uh, Carnival Goer at a location. So we get Lost in Venice, which says either take two Horror or move to the location across from you, and we decide to take two horror, because we're not gonna uh, waste all that progress. We lose the fine clothes because we feel like, hopefully we don't need it anymore now that we have all the innocent revelers, and we put one uh, horror on Rex. All right. So we move on to our turn, and our first two actions, we put the innocent revelers underneath the act card, meeting the criteria to flip over the act. So we move on to act 1B which says, Many of the revelers are under the sway of a foul spell, and they cannot see the danger emerging around them. You push your way through the crowded streets, gathering what few sane revelers you can find and guiding them toward the relative safety of the basilica. As the last of them are escorted inside, the ground shakes violently and a watery shape looms above the island to the south from the deep within the lagoon. Their ritual nearly finished, the revelers in the streets begin to unmask. And it also says, that we put the set aside enemy into play in the center of all the locations and for the remainder of the scenario he is considered to be in play but not at any location and then we have to choose a face down carnival goer and flip it face up now this guy in the center he is massive i mean he doesn't have the massive keyword but he is four combat eight health and he cannot be evaded uh basically he anybody can attack him from any location but he's not considered engaged with you so he doesn't actually attack you uh not directly at least there is the um tentacle chaos token that forces him to attack you if he's present so for the uh, act two act uh, 1b we flip over a card and it's this guy who um actually has the hunter keyword i'm just double checking that but yeah, the guy that we just flipped over that's to the right of our location, he has the hunter keyword, but it's interesting. He he either moves in a clockwise direction or in the in the opposite uh, location. So I'm thinking to myself that I probably want to just wait because if I wait, that guy will move uh, all the way down to the bottom location instead of to the right, clearing my path to the canal side because Act 2A says... Get to the boats. The civilians in the Basilica are safe for now, but Venice is doomed if you don't act quickly. The only way to ensure the safety of the sacrifices is to draw the creature into the lagoon away from the city. Sweat beads down your forehead as you realize that this decision may be your last. Legs trembling, you head toward the moored boats docked by the canals. 
And it also says that if we enter the canal side, which is the very right location with that enemy there that has a aloof, that lady that we keep putting the uh, doom on, if we get there, then we're, we're on our way out of here because we're trying to get to the docks. We're trying to get to the boats. So I'm just kind of reading all of that right now and considering my options and thinking, what do I want to do with my last action? I should probably just wait. And that's exactly what I do. So I just draw a card and I draw into my signature card, Search for the Truth, which allows us to draw even more cards, or we can just um, use, the, use it for its pips, two intellect icons and one wild icon. We go to the enemy phase. Baleful Reveler moves once, and we reveal just a number, so he doesn't move again, thank God, because that would spell doom. We trigger the hunter on the guy on the bottom, and then we trigger the hunter on... The guy that we were just talking about who goes all the way to the uh, location across from him instead of to the next location clockwise, if, if it's faster. So that's pretty cool because now he's totally out of the way and we have a clear path to the canals. And we have all these, these cool mobility options like the Nun and like Pathfinder. So we can go as far as possible in the clockwise direction before we even take our first action. For our encounter card in the Mythos phase, after adding a Doom, we get Watcher's Gaze, which is a test willpower 4, and if we fail, we take a Horror. We don't even bother boosting, we anticipate failing this, and we attribute the Horror to, um, I believe, Rex. We end up attributing it to Rex. But we realized that we were supposed to have advanced the agenda, so we go ahead and retroactively do that. And it just says that we have to flip over a, a mass carnival goer, and if it's a reveler, we put it under the agenda. If it's a, an enemy, then we just flip, we just leave him flipped over, and we uh, put the agenda back as long as there's at least one mass carnival goer. Which now I think we've flipped them all over, so we're supposed to advance to the next agenda. So we bring that out. And it says, uh, Agenda 3A, Chaos in the Carnival. In the lagoon, an ancient terror stirs. The creature's tentacles coil around the city, and the water level begins to rise. As if in response, the chanting you hear throughout the city grows louder. It has forced, after a writhing appendage enters play, place two doom on it, and it's a three doom agenda. So they're really pushing the the doom on us all right for our first uh, action before we even take our first action we do exactly like i said and we use the nun in the pathfinder to move two spaces and for our first action we move into the canals which lets us advance to act three well actually act two b so we flip over act two b and it's a location, a gondola. It says to put the gondola in play, put the investigators at the gondola, and get rid of everything on the table except for the huge enemy in the middle. So that's what we do. We have to row. Relief turns to desperation as the creature draws its attention to your gondola. You have only one chance if you are to survive. And from now on, whenever we draw encounter cards, we instead look at the top five and put every single writhing appendage into play, uh, engaged with us, and discard everything else. If there are four resources on the gondola, we advance. And then it has the action to row as fast as you can. You test either uh, combat or agility two. And you place, if, you succe if you're successful, you place a resource on the gondola. And... Um, if you have four resources, then you win. But we are already really hurting, uh, and we don't have a lot of time. We don't have very many cards in our hand that can help us with these particular uh, stats. And so we're really going to be um, relying on the luck of the chaos bag to help us out with this. So as I get that all set up, I'm just thinking about how I don't have very many options. Um, there's no clue at this location, so we can't use Inquiring Mind. That's a, just a dead card. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about building your own Rex deck. Um, but the cool thing is I do have Mind Over Matter, which lets me use my Intellect stats as my Combat and Agility stats. But I should have probably waited until next turn when I had three full actions, because I'm on my second action right now. And uh, I was just so excited to use it that I used it now. 
um, and I'm not going to be able to get the full effect of it. My first test, which is with my second action, was a success, and I was able to put one resource on it. And I try with my third action to row again, and I get an auto fail. So I was only able to get one resource. I kind of blew it with that mind over matter. So we move on to the next uh, phase, the mythos phase. And the, the act says that we have to draw five encounter cards and any writhing appendages um, uh, get become engaged with us. And the agenda says that we put two doom on those writhing appendages and there's only three doom threshold. So we draw five and there's no writhing appendages so everything gets discarded. So we kind of lucked out there. I do in fact discard everything and nothing becomes engaged with me. That This is my last chance. I, I'm already ready to die. Basically, so this is my last chance to row out of here. I need to use all three of my actions to get all three successes, but I don't have very many pips to contribute to either combat or agility. So here goes agility. Uh, I'm boosting it up by one, by two, to get five versus two for this test, and we reveal minus two, so that is a success. And we were able to get one more resource on there. That's two resources, so good. Only two more. I need a. I need to bet a thousand here. Now I'm thinking about. Uh, I don't have any more agility icons, so I'm gonna try to boost up my combat to as much as I can. It's a base of two. I put two combat pips in there, and I need a. I need to beat two, so I'm going in with a four versus two, but I get minus four and I fail. Uh, the Elder Thing token is actually the worst because it's the only token that makes that big monster attack me. So I have to take two damage and two horror, putting Rex very close to death. So I discard those, reducing my options even more, and with my final action I have no other real option but to test agility by itself or to draw. So I, I draw into an elusive and uh, and pass the turn, so I get to draw again for upkeep, and I get a resource. But I draw into guts, which, if only uh, I had something other than guts, that would be great. So I draw into. Luckily, I only draw into one writhing appendage, um, but it does get two doom. So the agenda is going to advance if I don't kill it. So I can either uh, deal with it, kill it, so giving me potentially one more turn, or just try to um, stomach the attacks of opportunity. But I can only take uh, three attacks of opportunity, well, two, and then the third one will kill me. Um, so I really only have two chances to get two more um, resources on this thing. We're just going to try to stomach it and get two successes here. We were able to get our third one because we boosted our, our agility to four, and we got a minus one, so that's perfect. So if we can only uh, test, uh, our only hope is to get a minus one again because we need to test agility. Th our agility is three. We can't boost it, and, we, and we're trying to beat two. So this is our last hope. Anything else will kill us. And we're just kind of like not able to accept our fate right now that we're probably going to lose, so we're just keep, we keep reading everything. But at some point, I just have to accept my fate. I need a minus one. I got a minus two. I get the attack of opportunity. And I was unsuccessful. So that kills me. So during the... I'm still essentially uh, alive until the enemy phase. But during the enemy phase, the writhing appendage will attack me. And that is game over. So just for fun, I peek at the other side of the agenda. And it says... To that the big giant monster will attack me anyway so I just illustrate that <laughs> and I'm really really dead so did we answer the question how the hell do you beat carnival no we still don't know <laughs> but I hope that this video was informative and helps you to build your own uh, Rex deck perhaps better than I could uh, we were very close if we just had smarter play 
uh, we could have made it. Or if we had maybe a few more pips, like I was mentioning at the beginning of the video, a few more pips um, to cover our uh, agility and our combat, that would have been great. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fieldwork. I hope you enjoyed this new segment. And if you're still listening, thank you very much. Um, please like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. I'm going to keep uh, my eye on the community and see what other kind of questions I could uh, answer out there. Alrighty, thank you.